Hello, welcome to episode 203 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 23rd of March. So welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting and I have a finished object, so watch out for that. I have some sewing, which is dressmaking. I have some information on my shop update on Friday, which is a big update. And I'm really excited to show you some new colourways that I've dyed and also quite a few opal yarns that I'm going to have in my shop. It's my favourite commercial sock yarn, so I've got quite a few to show you today. And I have a little appearance from Jensen at the end of the podcast, so that will be time stamped in the bar down below the screen so you can skip along to any of the sections. So we have the Retro Mal and also Craft 20 a Day make alongs going on in the Ravelry group and on Instagram at the moment. The Retro Mal is finishing at the end of this month. But I do have a couple of other make-alongs planned for this year. We've got a shawl along starting in April and that will run until June. And then we're going to have a summer sock along as well from June until August. Um, so there will be prizes drawn for each. So don't forget to enter. Um, don't forget the retro mail finishes at the end of this month. So you don't have long to put your entries in. So let's get on with the knitting shall we so I have a finished object and I'm so pleased so Barbara is wearing it so I'm going to get her to come over and show you my wishes cardigan thank you very much Barbara so Barbara is wearing my wishes cardigan and it hasn't been blocked yet so it is a little bit curly at the moment but I think with some blocking this will have some gorgeous gorgeous drape because you can see how much extra fabric there is at the front here to have an extra drapey section so it is a really beautiful shaped cardigan comes down really low at the back and you can see the rows of increases along the back of the work so it's knitted from the top down and it's got this really nice rib that is knitted as you go so you don't have to pick up stitches along the neckline so if you're not a fan of picking up stitches around the neckline this is definitely a good pattern for you so I finished the sleeves and I've done three quarter length sleeves because that's the length of sleeve that I like to wear um, but the instructions do say to actually complete a full sleeve and they do say to actually do more ribbing but I've just kept the ribbing the same as the bottom of the garment just so that it sort of matches in. So I dyed up four skeins of yarn in my gold colourway and this is a beautiful mix of yak, merino and silk and I've got about 20 grams left so I had plenty sort of left over. I wasn't playing yarn chicken which is good. <laughs> so I was going to tell you about how I chose my sizes. So I did do a swatch for this in the yarn that I was using and I gave it a wash and a block and it came out a little bit smaller than it said the swatch should be so it should have been four inches and mine came to three and a half inches wide so I did some calculations on how I chose the sizes so my because my swatch was three and a half inches instead of four inches what I did is there's, there's a little chart here, I've scribbled all over it as well, there's a little chart here on the pattern that tells you all the measurements around certain areas. So there's the bust measurement um, and that's the one I considered first. I made some calculations where I took the measurement in inches, divided it by 4 and times it by 3.5, which was the measurement I was getting for my swatch. And then that gave me a new finished measurement for the garment and then was able to choose the size closest to my bust measurement. Because of the design of the pattern, because it is lots of increases and actually it just gets wider the further out you get, I chose to use my upper bust measurement so that it would fit nice and snugly around the shoulders. So I ended up choosing the extra, extra large size to knit for the body of the cardigan. I just followed the instructions for the extra, extra large all the way through the body because there's all those increases around the body anyway. There's rows of increases that run all the way from the front all the way around the back to the other side. Um, so this is gives you an excess of fabric around the bust so I didn't worry about doing any short rows for the bust area and then because my arms always come up slimmer than the body measurements for a garment so I always end up having to choose a smaller size for my arms than the pattern says that goes with the body measurements if that makes sense so for the extra extra large um, 
it would have been too big for my arm I think it would come up a couple of inches too wide around here because there's a measurement a finished measurement on the pattern and obviously I did the calculation again where I divided the finished measurement by four and times it by 3.5 to get the finished garment measurement in my gauge and this meant that the large size of arm was the size that would fit my arm nicely so I've picked that so easier said than done so the garment is knitted from the top down and then you come and pick up the sleeves after you've knitted the the actual body of the cardigan so I knitted the body of the cardigan in the extra extra large size then I went back and I picked up the sleeves on the arm and I obviously had the stitch count for the extra extra large size but I wanted to go down to the large which is two sizes smaller I had quite a few more stitches extra on the arms than I needed for the arm size that I wanted to knit so I literally picked up the amount of stitches on the underarm that the pattern suggested and knit one row and then I started doing some decreases but I used the same method that they suggested for the arm decreases further down the arm so I used that same technique that they said but I did do two decreases on every other row using the same technique as they did further down the arm every other row until I got down to the stitch count that I needed um, and if you look carefully you can see, oh I've left a stitch marker on there, you can see that I've got some decrease lines where I've done those decreases under the arm. If I take it off Barbara, sorry Barbara I'm exposing you, um, you should be able to see a little bit better. So I've done those decreases immediately after I've picked up those stitches and then I've knitted exactly what the pattern says for the arm and it gave me a lovely shape. And I'm really pleased with how this arm fits. Nice and snug fit because I wanted it to be nice and fitted. I really love this colourway. It's got a grey tone to the yarn before it's dyed. Um, so I really love that natural colour that's coming through as well as the gold that I've dyed it. Obviously it's not blocked yet. Next week I will block it and you'll be able to see a comparison to what it looks like before and after it's been blocked. I'll show you what it looks like on. I really love the fit of the sleeve. That's really nice. Um, what I just did was I kept knitting the sleeve until um, I found that it was just past my elbows really. So I just kept knitting, trying it on and seeing how long I wanted it rather than sort of measuring it. So I just kept trying it on to see what it looked like. But I'm really pleased with how it looks. So pleased I can actually wear it at the East Anglia Yarn Festival this weekend. Um, hopefully it'll dry if I give it a block tonight and I can have a new garment to wear. Ta-da! And you can see where the increases are, like a raglan increase just at the top of the arms here. And the front is quite a bit shorter than the back and it goes just nicely over my bum which is nice and flattering I think so I think this will go with quite a lot of my garments because I wear quite a lot of minty green and turquoises as well as pinks and I think that they both go really nicely with it and I completely forgot to say this is the wishes cardigan by Hohi Locatelli I will leave a link to the pattern and also the yarn in the description bar down below so next we are on to the sewing section now I have made a loungewear set and I think it'll be easier if I just pop it on and show you what it looks like and then talk about it rather than getting Barbara to wear it because she hasn't got legs bless her and she can't show off the trousers so I'll just put it on myself so you can have a look so I'm wearing my new loungewear set. This is a set that I've made before um, and I really like it to actually wear as pyjamas really because they're nice and comfy. I like to have um, jogging bottoms that aren't too wide. I've got bits of cotton on me already. Oh dear, it gets everywhere. Anyway, they're a slim leg jogging bottom with a cuff at the bottom, but I have actually taken a couple of inches off the length of these. These are the Stella Joggers by Tilly and the Buttons and they're from the Tilly and the Buttons stretch book. 
really like them because they've got pockets in as well and you always need pockets in pajamas i think they're very useful <laughs> the only other thing that i've done is i've shortened the waistband a bit actually so that the elastic that i wanted to use was the the height of it rather than it being sort of lost in the middle and then when i attached the elastic to the actual trousers i made sure that the elastic was catching in the overlocking in the bottom so that it wouldn't flip over when I'm actually wearing them. So I think other than that, they're pretty much the same as what the pattern said. But the only thing is with the Stella joggers, they only go up to a size UK 20. And I think I sized them out a little bit um, just by grading the seams out a couple of sizes from my calculations to get them to fit me. Um, but they're really nice and comfy. I don't know if I'd wear them out the house, to be honest, because they're a bit slim fit, but you know. <laughs> But they're nice and comfy for in bed anyway. The fabric I used for these was some French terry and it's quite a lightweight French terry. But I did use some ribbing for the cuffs at the bottom and also the waistband as well. And they were both from Guthrie and Garni as well as the fabric that I made for the top as well. So the top is the Frankie t-shirt also by Tilly and the Buttons. And that is also in the stretch book. This pattern normally comes with a very high neckline, but I modified it to have the same neckline as the Agnes t-shirt by Tilly and the Buttons as well. Um, so that's a little bit lower on me. I don't like to have necklines that are too high up. And also for this t-shirt, the I think it's a full length or three quarter length sleeve, the original pattern, and I've just shortened it for a short sleeve as well, so that I can get a t-shirt out of one meter of fabric. And I do always do the same modifications uh, on this. This is like my, one of my favourite t-shirts patterns. A lot of people always ask me about how I grade for the grade the side seams for the Frankie t-shirt and not do a full bust adjustment. Because the bottom of the t-shirt is actually shaped rather than a straight line, I haven't bothered dropping the seam sort of two inches at the front um, to allow for the bust area. You can always cut down and across to the centre of the pattern piece and then drop that down the amount of extra fabric that you need to go over your bust to make the seam equal for the front and the back. But I haven't done it for this because the hem isn't the same at the front and the back anyway. I've just made sure that I've got plenty of room at the side seams to so just grade it out to the right size. Again, because this is from the Tilly and the Button stretch book, it only goes up to a size 20 but I did grade out to, to like one size up I think I'm just over the size 20 um, in that size range so I just grade out to sort of the equivalent to another size bigger so it's not too difficult to grade up sort of one size from a size 20 for me um, I'll give you a little bit of a twirl <laughs> basically just parading around in my nightwear really this fabric is so pretty it's got little hearts on it's quite a lightweight jersey fabric and that was from Guthrie and Garni as well if they still have it in the shop I will link it in the description bar down below and I've done blue stitching on my cover stitch machine on the bottom and around the neck on the sleeves of this to go with the bottoms and I also used the ribbon on the neckline as well. This ribbon is quite a thin version of ribbon so I was able to attach it to the jersey fabric without it being too bulky. So now we have the shop update section and I have quite a lot to show you so brace yourself. <laughs> First of all, I just wanted to mention that the April yarn clubs are on my website and available for pre-order. They will be available until the 3rd of April and they will be shipped on the 8th of April. And they are surprise yarn clubs and the theme this year is the Power Ballad Sock Club and I'm doing the mixtape minis again where I name each of the five minis and I give you a little card with a description of what the songs are that I've picked and what I've been inspired by. So those are in the shop now and all the things that I'm going to show you now they're not going to be in the shop until this week's shop update that is Friday the 25th of March at 7pm GMT. So this was a mini set from last year from the mixtape minis and I'm re-releasing it as a set for this year and it's blues, turquoise and pinks. And first of all we have I Want That Man by Debbie Harry and that's a turquoise with pink speckles. I have Just a Mirage by Jelly Bean, which is turquoise, pink and blue. We have Joyride by Roxette, and that is blue and turquoise. We have Shampoo and Trouble, 
so that's pink speckles and then drop the pilot by joan armor trader and i think those go together really nicely that's what i try and do with the mixtape minis make them a set that you can use together so last year i also did the music from the movies sock sets well but i have reworked the colorway slightly this is what it looks like in its original form it had some more dark, slightly darker brown and I had a happy accident, made it wrong, but then I actually prefer the look of this one. So this is what it's going to look like now. But this is Goonies Are Good Enough. And this is obviously a song from the Goonies by Cindy Lauper. I'm going to pair it with this gorgeous golden yellow colour. And it's got some browns and beiges with some oranges and blues in there as well as some, um, as well as some mustard. So I thought that that was really beautiful so that one is inspired by goonies are good enough so that'll be in the shop i have a new colorway and mini set for spring so inspired by spring i've dyed all the colors of sort of wild flowers in a field as delicate splashes on a natural colored yarn and i'm going to pair that with a red i think for a sock set but you don't have to choose the mini to go with it as well but i also thought it'd be really nice to dye up some minis so that if you wanted the the colors all separate they would go really nicely as a set as well so i know for example the six wives shawl um you need a set of minis and a full skein as well so those would get, go really nicely together because that picks out the colors that are in the main skein you can see the colours there. So that's a, a sort of wildflower field, really, with like the poppies and the bright yellow and purple flowers on the green field. They'll both be called In Bloom after the Nirvana song, um, but the mini set and then the full skein as well. But this will be available in all the other bases as well as all the other ones I'm going to show you now. I also i'm bringing out this gorgeous bright yellow and this is called build me up buttercup i actually designed this ages and ages ago and i never actually got around to put it on the website so this is a tonal yellow colorway and it goes really nicely with in bloom as well i think because it's got little splashes of yellow and i've popped it with this really nice rust color as a, as a sock set but if you do fancy one of the other colors out of the mini set these other three colorways like the red the green or the purple would go equally equally nice with it so if you've seen another colorway on the website and you'd like that instead of this rust color as a sock set just drop me a message and i'm happy to do that um, so that's build me up buttercup so I've now dyed up full skeins of the Love Changes Everything colourway um, mini set like this ta -da! and these all are lovely soft colours that go really well together and they are designed to actually fade from one colour to another so first of all is Crazy For You and this is a very pale coral with delicate grey speckles on and then it fades into this colourway which is the Wind Beneath My Wings colourway which I actually released um, for sort of Valentine's Day um, and that's got the same coral colour as this one but also some pink in as well and then I faded it in to Pretty in Pink and then after that we have Chocolate because I thought that was a lovely sort of pinky brown colour and that that is a song actually by by Kylie Minogue which I remember from the um, from the early 90s I think um, so those fade in nicely and then we're sort of going into brown colors and then we've got like a sandy beige color and I thought what better than to call it sandy <laughs> from Greece sang by John Travolta so that's sandy and then I have a beige with some turquoisey blue in as well. So these all fade really nicely together. And this one is called On the Beach. So I've actually, I've named these after I've designed these colours really. Um, because they were originally designed for a fade uh, in a mini set. And now they will all be available separately um, to purchase as large skeins. And I will also pair them up with some minis as well um, for sock sets. Um, but you don't have to buy the minis you can buy them in all the different bases that i supply in my shop see if i can hold them all up <laughs> it gets very difficult when it's more than a few skeins um so for example you might want a nice um if you're knitting a shawl you might want the nice pink and 
like a chocolate brown which is pretty in pink and chocolate or you might put together the sandy colorway with crazy for you i think that goes together really nicely as well so there's a there's a number of combinations that you could have but to be honest all of those go with each other so you've got um you know that when you're purchasing two of the yarns you know they go together really well so now i've got 14 new opal colorways to show you which i'm really excited about i love opal yarn for a commercial sock yarn they are my absolute favorite they're a sort of mixture between being nice and soft but also a little bit rustic as well so they'll last because if you're using socks all the time the commercial yarn is a little bit more durable so it's a mixture bet between wool 75% wool and 25% polyamide for all of these this first set is called the opal beauty 2 and it's actually got an edelweiss and vitamin e extract in which is supposed to be good for skin care and it has protective features such as being antibacterial apparently so that sounds good doesn't it so first of all like i said i'm going to talk about the opal beauty 2 range and there's six of the colorways that go with this and this first one is called mountain ridge and i'll pop a picture on the screen of what the colorway looks knitted up because they actually publish pictures of them knitted up so you can see how they sort of stripe but i love these colors really gorgeous turquoise and pinks and yellows really my cup of tea i'm gonna have to steal one from the stock <laughs> so that is mountain ridge we then have high alpine and this is a slightly more muted palette but equally it's got a gorgeous green blue and a sort of red pink in there as well i really like this one i was i've what i've tended to do is pick colors that i really like but these two whole ranges i liked every single one so i've actually purchased a stock of all of these next we have twin summit and this is a really nice vivid pink really gorgeous with a bit of purple in there as well this one is algo i know that it's a mountainous region in bavaria so this is a really nice standard blue gray um colorway that could be ideal for um somebody who likes sort of masculine style socks next we have ridge and beautiful sort of corally pinky red with turquoise cream and greens in there really beautiful color combination um might have to steal one of those as well <laughs> last of the opal beauty 2 range is weather peak and this has got a slightly more vivid blue and gray together similar to this one but slightly more bright um so that's another another option uh, for somebody who likes sort of blue gray or sort of masculine quite muted socks ideal for sort of work so they don't show but i like a nice bright sock <laughs> so the next range of opal yarns is the africa range and i just thought these were absolutely gorgeous too so we have picturesque and there's a really nice vivid green in the blues and greys there so a little pop of color if somebody likes a little bit of brightness but not too in your face that one's ideal so that's picturesque so we've got a gorgeous bright red and yellow and that's called adorned really beautiful another version of a sort of blue and gray that's lively um if i compare it to the other two blue ones from the other range um there is quite a difference from there but on the screen i'll pop a picture of how that stripes up as well quite often the opal yarns look quite different to each other in terms of how they stripe as well we have brilliant which is a gorgeous mixture of oranges yellows and a little bit of pink there if you look really closely really nice complement of pink actually when you look at it to start with you don't notice that pink but i think that that really complements it lovely and the next one is extraordinary really pretty combination of blues and greens there it sort of grades from one to the other with the addition of purple as well one of my favorites this is multifaceted and it's a gorgeous blend of greens there similar sort of blend as the last one i showed you but greens instead with a little pop of pink and that's called multifaceted 
the next one is called exciting and that's got some really nice pink red and turquoise and gray in there as well really pretty i think that's one of the ones that i was drawn to in the pictures actually and it doesn't disappoint and last but not least we have a blue and a gray so it's like a really pale blue with different gray tones in there and that one's called adventurous so there is an enormous amount of yarn can i hold it all in one hand <laughs> so those are the africa set and these are the beauty two set so there we are that is all the opal yarn that's going in the shop sorry it was a bit long-winded the shop update but i just got a bit excited when i was ordering the yarn there but everything i've spoken about um today will be in the shop tomorrow 25th of march at 7 p.m I have actually restocked the Passion Chart Keepers again because they sold out. I did that earlier in the week though, so they are in the shop now. If anything goes out of stock, drop me an email and I'll send you an email when it comes back into stock as well, or I'll let you know whether I can't get hold of any. But most of the time, it's 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 all restockable. It's just that I'm waiting for another order to come. The only thing that I have got out of stock that I can't get hold of is some of the higher higher bamboo fixed needles, um, but I'm hoping that they'll come into stock again in the near future so now i've got a little of appearance of my little jensen so over to you jensen so today jensen is wearing his tangerine Ooh. trousers yeah and they are patterned by sew over it and you've got the option to either have feet or no feet in these so they can last a bit longer in them if you don't have the feet in but i like the fact that you don't have to have separate socks with them um they come up relatively big this is a three to six month size and jensen is about just over four months but he has got quite a big um, reusable nappy on underneath it's a nighttime one and they do come up quite high at the waist, so I've just got it folded down here. Um, but I think you're enjoying wearing them, aren't you, Jensen? Yeah. Say bye-bye to everybody. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much for modelling. So that's all I've got for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I shall see you in the next episode. Bye!